Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. An arraignment is held for an alleged robbery that took place at the mobile gas station. Also tonight, the serving age for alcoholic beverages could soon change. And an individual gets arrested for a theft on Suicide Cliff. In sports, NMI men's tennis discovers gold in Samoa. Now it's a gold rush. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. phone you want now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. Hoffa Day, Tiruwami, and Good Evening Commonwealth. Today is Tuesday, July 16th, 2019. In court, an arraignment is held for a mill that allegedly robbed a worker for the Chalan Piao Mobile Gas Station back in January. On January 29th, 37-year-old Benigno Muna Sablon allegedly met a mobile employee that was getting off work. When the employee got into his vehicle, Sablon confronted the mobile worker and told him to hand over his money, and Sablon threatened to shoot the mobile employee if he looked back. Also that same night, Sablon allegedly committed the crimes of assault and battery, disturbing the peace, and theft at Blue Sky Poker in Chalampiao. A new charge was picked up by Sablon of a violation of probation, which Sablon is pleading not guilty to as well. A status conference has been set on both cases for August 19th at 9 a.m. Up on Capitol Hill, a bill has been passed by the CNMI House of Representatives that will allow more opportunity for 18-year-olds in the CNMI. House Bill 21-48 permits individuals 18 years and older to sell and serve alcoholic beverages at different establishments in the CNMI. To serve alcoholic beverages at on-sale establishments, which is inclusive of uh, convenience stores, bars, restaurants, uh, hotels. But some concerns have been raised. Ultimately, the bill would allow for them to serve alcohol, but there was a amendment that was placed on the floor, and in which I introduced a House Substitute 1 version to, to uh, rectify the, the concern brought forth by the, the Department of Commerce, ABTC, which is that they shouldn't mix, because mixing, I guess it requires tasting. And yeah, we're, uh, the, the idea is to, to allow them to serve, but not to, to consume alcohol in any form. 37 states currently permit 18-year-olds to serve alcohol in the U.S. And the intent of this bill is to open up job opportunities, removing barriers for young adults. According to the, the Department of, or the Second Chamber of Commerce, and as well as the Department of Commerce, there are many, many hundreds of jobs waiting out there for these 18-year-old individuals. And, rec and we recently had about over 600, uh, 600 students that recently graduated here in the cinema alone. And that's 600 people out there looking for jobs. And if we can entrust 18-year-old individuals to vote for leaders like ourselves up here in Capitol Hill, 
then I have a fiduciary duty and responsibility to to provide opportunities for them and represent them as well. Providing a chance to get into the workforce without age discrimination. We definitely have a lot of support from the business community as well as some some of our community members that especially some parents who 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 understand and know the difficulty of it, uh, the difficulty of getting jobs here in the cinema. And this bill provides them that opportunity and the business community are very happy um, that the, the 18 year old individuals are, or hopefully they're happy. This this bill is for them. The bill now heads to the Senate for approval and then to Governor Ralph Torres to become a law. Reporting for KSPN2, I'm Ashley McDowell. The Department of Public Safety has worked quickly to arrest an individual for theft that occurred on Suicide Cliff Lookout. According to a release on Sunday, DPS received a call from an Asian male reporting a theft of a GoPro camera at 7.18 a.m. The individual told officers he noticed a local male walk toward the railing and grab the GoPro camera. When the individual asked for it back, the local male got into a white sedan and drove off. The individual took a photo of the vehicle license plate to show to officers. Around 9 a.m. the same day, officers located the sedan with the same license plate and spoke with the owner of the vehicle, who admitted to taking the camera at the suicide cliff. The local male was arrested at 9.04 for theft and was booked at the Department of Corrections. The Saipan and Northern Islands legislative delegation, SNILED, has approved three appropriation bills. The Saipan and Northern Islands Legislative Delegation, SNILED, approved appropriation bills starting with the reappointments of the chef aboard. The three of them is uh, uh, chef aboard member uh, Mr. Francisco uh, Cabrera and uh, chef aboard member uh, Ray Munya and also uh, Miss Ursula Lefoyfoy Adon. Uh, they were uh, reappointed by the mayor of Saipan and uh, we, it's, it's the uh, delegation body that uh, confirms uh, this uh, board member. So they were officially confirmed yesterday for another term in Sheffa. Next for approval was the House Local Bill 21-22 to reappropriate the remaining balance of $21,790 to the office of the mayor. Uh, these uh, are the uh, um, leftover appropriations that uh, we had appropriate to the Saipan mayor. So what I did from several uh, uh, appropriations, so what I did is I, I, I combined all the uh, leftovers like 1,800 and reappropriated back to the mayor's office uh, for the uh, repair of uh, one of their uh, uh, bucket uh, truck, which uh, uh, was uh, uh, broken uh, on the recovery efforts of their Typhoon U2. And another appropriation that was acted upon was a rather large one, authored by the Speaker of the House, B.J. Atal, to appropriate $1.9 million from the revenues collected for poker fees for fiscal year 2019 to different organizations. Out of the uh, 1.9, we gave uh, uh, 1.2 to uh, uh, 10,000 goes to the Saipan Little League, 180,000 uh, uh, goes to Saipan Zoning Office. We also uh, appropriated $400,000 to the office of the mayor for its operation, including a purchase of a 10 CY truck for their operations. <coughs> we also did appropriate uh, 83,000 uh, to the office of the mayor of Northern Islands for their operation as well. Uh, we did uh, provided a 39,000 uh, to the Saipan and Northern Island Municipal Council for the Saipan and Northern Islands, and uh, uh, for the purchase of a vehicle. Uh, uh, they don't uh, have a vehicle uh, to do their their duties and. Uh, uh, they have uh, requested through the delegation, so we provided also a uh, funding for a purchase of a vehicle. Also appropriated was $500,000 to the Northern Marianas College, $250,000 to the Saipan Higher Education Financial Assistance Program, and $250,000 to the public school system. One of the reasons why we, we, we uh, 
acted on this session is that uh, because of NMC and PSS, uh, their needs uh, to uh, to uh, keep the operation flowing. I know that uh, PSS would uh, are preparing to start for uh, next uh, school year again, and uh, I'm I'm hoping that. Uh, this funding of 250 would would uh, uh, come and assist them with whatever needs they have, uh, and that goes also to NMC as well. These appropriations are now off to Governor Ralph Torres, where he has 40 days to decide whether to veto them or approve them. Reporting for KSPN2, I'm Ashley McDowell. The Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation's Bureau of Environmental Health has released the sanitary inspections of retail and food and drinking serving establishments, and one was closed down last month. According to a release for the month of June 2019, 50 establishments received a grade A, 9 establishments received a grade B, 0 received a grade C, and the establishment I Love Ramen in Garapan was closed down from June 20th to June 25th. This is due to serious violations of health and sanitation standards. BEH scores as follows. Grade A is 90 to 100. Grade B is 80 to 89. Grade C is 70 to 79. And below a 69 results in closure or suspension. Coming up, better be safe than sorry. That's the message in this next story following the break. Get your daily serving of 4G LTE data with it &E's daily prepaid plans. Choose from the best priced plans in the Marianas. Get one gigabyte of data for $2.50 a day or choose a $1.50 or $2 plan. Need more data? Top up! Get 100 megabytes for $1 or one gigabyte for $10. Visit any it &E store or call us to learn more and ask about our prepaid loyalty plan. it &E, Explore your world. Ah, the Netherlands, home of the Strope Waffle McFlurry from McDonald's. A mix of delicious vanilla soft serve and caramel waffle cookie pieces. But to get one, you'd have to sneak out of the office, dig out your luggage, wait for boarding group 12, figure out what that means, take a train, take a boat, take a bike, and finally order one. Or get to your neighborhood McDonald's now, because for a limited time, worldwide favorites are here. Around the world is now around the corner. Winigi PHI Pharmacy in Gofadahi, Ihinim Lomu. Our complete line of pharmaceuticals and lowest prices ensure you get the treatment that you deserve. Our compassionate, friendly, multilingual staff will take the time to get to know you, explain your medications to you, and answer any questions that you may have. Nere eyor sumaye uhalwere sven, uchu weyor safeye emwal evalisiu klalyam wire. Inuminang inyong gamot. Ayon sa inyoreseta ng inyong doktor at alin sunod sa bilin ng inyong pharmaceutical. We accept most insurance, but in case you don't have coverage, we offer cost-effective generic drugs. PHI Pharmacy, Pharmacy your lifelong partner in health. PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Saipan has never had a destructive tsunami in its recorded history, but that doesn't mean it cannot happen. KSPN's Bob Kuldeen talks to an expert about the threat to lives here. Monday evening, CNMI Homeland Security and Emergency Management issues an earthquake notice from near Papua New Guinea with this statement, quote, Currently, no tsunami warnings or advisories are issued by the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, unquote. Well, that's business as usual for Homeland Security in this part of the Pacific with frequent earthquakes occurring along the Pacific Rim of Fire. Most of them do not generate tsunamis, but the alert system has been put in place and is working. Tsunamis occur frequently in the Marianas, but are hardly ever noticed. Well, actually, we get a lot of tsunamis out here. Anytime there's an underwater earthquake in the Pacific, we're going to get some kind of a tsunami. Uh, most of them are really small, an inch, maybe a foot. I remember when I was up here and it was about three feet, but it hit at low tide and nobody even knew about it. 
In 2011, an earthquake off of Japan produced the largest tsunami seen here by this reporter covering weather for the past 26 years. It affected the Xterra Triathlon race that morning. It's a of current, a lot of, a lot of wave action. Coming in from Swallowing Australia, number 162, Wayne Pardell. Chip Guard from the National Weather Service said there was no damage here that was reported, but there was farther away. The, the big earthquake in Japan back in 2011, that was a three and a half foot tsunami here in Saipan, but it hit a low tide. And it hit most of Micronesia at low tide, but when it got to the southern hemisphere, it hit at high tide and it did a bunch of damage down there. He says it comes down to probabilities. But the chances of getting a destructive tsunami here are, are, are not high. But I, I've got to tell you that uh, uh, strong earthquakes can generate strong currents around and, uh, and they can do some damage. The, the biggest concern we have, I've talked to, uh, I've talked to uh, earthquake specialists in Japan, and they think there's an 80 to 90 percent chance that in the next 30 to 40 years, they're going to have an 8 to 9 earthquake in the Nankai Trough. The concern is the line from the Nankai Trough to the Marianas. And it's oriented perpendicular to the Mariana Islands. So if a tsunami were generated by an earthquake there, it would travel right straight toward the Mariana Islands. So that's the one that really concerns us the most. That is why a warning system is of, of vital importance to the Marianas. And I always tell people, just look at the experience in uh, American Samoa in 2009. On the 28th of September, you know what people in Samoa said? American Samoa? We can't get a destructive tsunami because the water's too deep. And we can't get a dest destructive tsunami because if a tsunami moves in, the Tonga Trench, which is the second deepest trench in the world, will will suck out the energy. And then they finally say, we're surrounded by a coral reef and, and that will protect us. And you know what happened on the 29th of September? They had a uh, destructive tsunami. 34 people died in American Samoa. 158 people died in Independent Samoa. The death toll could have been higher. And you know, more would have died, except the Tsunami Warning Center and the International Tsunami Information Center in Hawaii, they by the grace of God, they found some extra money and they went down there and they put on tsunami awareness workshops in July and that tsunami hit in September. Save lives? Oh, it saved a lot of lives. Thank you, Bob. On Guam, a retired cop is accused of jury tampering and CBD products have been inspected and cleared. KUAM reports. Half a day, CNMI, here's what's making news on Guam. In court today, Chief Judge Francis Tidinko Gatewood said it's not often she gets motions of recusal, and it's not often an attorney makes motions to have a judge recuse. But that's at issue in the case of retired cop John Boom Mantanonia, accused of jury tampering and more. His attorney, Jay Ariola, made the request while prosecuting attorney Roselsa Nicholas responded. This is an unusual case, let's put it that way, as I, as I get to the court. This is not your typical case where we're asking for a recusal for certain reasons. This is, a, this is an obstruction of justice case. The rule says when you are a witness to underlying disputed evidentiary facts, then there is a bias that you know about the facts. And so this really involves a case of alleged jury obstruction and jury tampering in a jury trial that occurred in front of her. Matanonia is facing a federal drug charge and is also charged for allegedly intimidating jurors in the drug case of Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser. The court decided to submit a written decision this morning at 9 a.m. In other news, Customs has cleared all cannabidiol or CBD products that were previously on hold this weekend. This after the governor ordered the release following close consultation with the Attorney General. Nestor Lacanto reports. Customs Director Ike Pareto explains the policy on CBD products going forward. We're going to continue to inspect the products when they come in, and if we have any questions about concerns, we'll note it down and uh, refer that matter to public health to pursue the matter. On Friday, Governor Leon Guerrero issued an order to release the products as they're no longer considered a controlled substance. But she says Guam must still adhere to other laws that regulate it. The governor says public health will continue to ensure that per Food and Drug Administration regulations, CBDs are not marketed for use in the diagnosis, cure or prevention of disease. 
Barreto says the biggest concern of his officers is that the products are properly labeled. And that's why we requested public health to please come and, and, and investigate these products. And that's what they did. They came to our agency, they recorded everything, they packaged it, sent it out to FDA. And we're waiting for the particular result. Public health will probably come up with uh, regulations dictating uh, that, that this is the, 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 the regulation that will uh, be in place so that customs can be uh, more knowledgeable of, of what to, uh, to enforce out there. In a news release, the governor cautioned that there's only one CBD prescription drug that's been approved by the FDA for safe consumption. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. Stay connected via our KUM mobile news app, follow us on any of the social media platforms, and sign up for our weekly email newsletter, KUM Digital Digest, on KUM.com. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tomas Maglonga. Thank you, Thomas, and thank you, Adriana. All right, coming up, the sports report serves... The latest from Appia and the Pacific Games next. now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. Hi, I'm Nell, a certified ophthalmic assistant here at Mariana's Eye Institute. Those lucky enough to not need glasses growing up generally develop a need as middle age approaches. So even though you've never worn glasses all your life, you should expect this to happen to you when you get into your middle 40s. It's treated with reading glasses. These type of glasses can sit comfortably on your nose so it's easy to see over them. And there are people that have needed glasses all their life that then get into something that we call bifocals so they can see in the distance with glasses and up close for the reading part. This has been Dr. Dennis Williams of the Mariana Science Institute. So what are you gonna do this year? At Gold's, a dedicated fitness studio with a cushioned floor is perfect for group exercise. The cardio room features a variety of treadmills, bikes, steppers, and ellipticals. Fitness machines will help you achieve your goals, and the largest free weight area on Saipan gives you comfortable space to work out. Gold's Gym Team is ready to help you get to your goals. Try harder. We know you can do it. Point of sports fans. Brandon Sports fans, the thing about money is after you get some, you want more. Same thing with gold. A 16 Pacific Games report from Samoa. The NMI's quest for gold continues thanks to NMI men's tennis. After taking the gold medal in team play last week, there's more in the gold mine this week with singles and doubles. Today, Colin Sinclair defeated his opponent from Samoa 6-1, 6-1. Ken Song fell to the silver medalist 6-2, 6 love. Over on the women's side and under the weather, Isabel Harris defeated an even more under the weather player from Samoa 6-4, 6-4. The team's golden run last week turned on the play of NMI's number two, Robbie Shore. Um, but you also know that the framework for um, getting through pool play uh, depends on you. There, are, you know, so if you win your singles match, 
then it makes it easier for the team to progress. And so uh, I think it's more difficult than um, an individual event in the sense that you know that if you lose, it's you know you're you're not just disappointed uh, for yourself, but you're letting down your entire team. So a lot of pressure. NMI National, Bobby Cruz is amazed but not surprised about Robbie's success. Robbie Shore is a phenomenal player. He, he's, he, his game is very unassuming. Um, he doesn't have that much power, but he is incredibly fast. He's very, you know, he's crafty. He has a lot of finesse, um, and he has a great transition game. He has a sense for um, when he's in control of the point, and he can turn um, uh, defense into offense um, by coming to the net. Um, he's incredibly consistent, and he wears you down. I've been at the um, you know, I've been on the losing end of our matches recently, um, which is tough because I actually used to coach Robbie. Um, so for the coach now to be on the losing end is a, is a really tough thing. But, um, you know, he's just a phenomenal player. And Team coach Jeff Race finally finds the pot of gold at the end of the Pacific Games rainbow. Uh, coach Jeff, you know, he just does a phenomenal job of making sure that the team is um, ready physically, uh, mentally. Um, and he's such an amazing emotional support type of coach. Um, he really does care. He builds a very strong relationship with all of us. And so um, I think also you want to win because you also want to do well for him. Day two in athletics, Zarene Sapong finishes 12th out of 19 in the 100 meters. Her time, 13.02 seconds. Tanya Tan ran the 5K in 21 minutes, 56 seconds. Yesterday, Trayvon Kitagua ran an 11.81 in the 100 meters putting him 30th out of 37 runners. In golf, the NMI finishes 11th out of 13 countries. New Caledonia, Samoa, and Fiji were the top three. Joe Kamakazi Camacho was the top NMI player. His 78, 77, 75, 79 places him 29th out of the 50 golfers. Ryan Kim shot a tournament low 66 on the final day, but didn't play in round two. Therefore, his total score did not count. Otherwise, he would have been in contention for a medal. A 16 Pacific Games report from Samoa. Here's the windup and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Hey, go Carters, come early and stay late. We have new summer hours for the Seaside Circuit at Mariana Resort. Daytime is pretty hot, but evenings are pretty cool and perfect for racing. Check in at Mariana's Trekking and you'll be off racing in no time. Bring your fans, bring your friends, and show your ID for a special off a day rate after five o'clock. And check out our other adventures too, like mountain biking, hiking, kayaking, and off-roading. Perfect for groups, perfect for families, perfect for friends. So Go ahead, bring your best friend. Mariana's Trekking, your adventure professional for 17 years. All right, today's high 88, the heat index 99, the low 76, minus 66%. Tomorrow, well, mostly cloudy skies is the prediction of the National Weather Service. Isolated showers, winds light and variable, high 87, low 79, seas 5 to 7 feet. And yes, there is a full moon tonight. Sunrise at triple nickels, high tide 650, low tide at 143, sunset at 651. Almost like the, you think of those as the doldrums, you know, it gets really calm out there. I saw out there today, uh, really flat. So the doldrums is that, that, that really no area of no wind and it's moving up into our latitude. That's why it's so calm today. Yeah, sometimes I look down uh, at the water up on Navy Hill and it just looks just glassy. Just glass, it was, absolutely it was glassy. not even moving. It's it was beautiful. glassy this morning, so it was really nice. So you're speaking about these uh, tsunamis. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yes. I didn't know about that Nankai trough. So yeah. I learned something new uh, on that. As did but I. Uh, yeah, because uh, a lot of people think if you have a reef, the reef will protect and, right. and, and save, uh, I mean, uh, slow down and take a lot of the energy away mm -hmm. from a, a, a tsunami wave. But there is a phenomenon also where the water, when it goes around it, it, and it hits, the water continues to go around and so mm -hmm. it can wash up on the side, for example. So if a tsunami came down and hit the north, mm -hmm. it could wrap around and, and come in. So. Uh, is it going to happen in our lifetime? Probably not, Probably but not. like it's just like the thing on the typhoon. 
it's it's probabilities is it's what true. it is. Uh, Weather is always probability for and sure. And there have been, like, he made a good point on the American Samoan now, but when at Pongo Pongo, uh, there was not a reef, and that wave came into the harbor. Mm -hmm. And tsunami means harbor wave in Japanese, and that's why they had so many casualties in American Samoa. Wow. The yeah. harbor. Yeah, it came you into the harbor. something every day, Bob. Not, not the reef, yeah. That was definitely a good piece you did, absolutely. Thank and you. Thank you, Bob. And thank you guys for watching. Please do tune in tomorrow night at 6. Have a great rest of your night. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.